All right, Stephen, are you ready to do this? Sure, absolutely. Okay. All right, so five, four, three, two, and one. All right, folks, welcome back to the Trauma Therapist Podcast. I'm very excited to have us my guest today, Stephen Gyllenhaal. Stephen, welcome. Thank you. Glad to be here. Delighted right. to be here. Thank you, sir. So Stephen is founder of the Identity Development Institute, whose mission is to grow a community of practitioners, researchers, and educators who are early trauma-informed across North America. Wounds from conception through pre-verbal development are a major cause of lifelong challenges. Getting to the core of the matter allows these early traumas to be processed and open space for each of us to live with more authenticity, power, and creativity. Stephen trained with Dr. Franz Rupert and Marta Thorsheim in Oslo and Munich and facilitates ID sessions in North America. For over 50 years, he's pursued two careers, one as an award-winning director of over 60 films, and two as a professional patient trying to gain clarity about his own personal issues through some form of therapy, analysis, or 12-step program. Stephen, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. All right. Thank you. So, so go ahead. You know, I was just going to say, so I woke up last night kind of freaking out a little bit um, because I went, oh my God. God, I have to take my son to Disneyland today, and I want to do the podcast. What am I going to do? I thought, well, I'll put my, I'll go in the car and I'll get a computer. And I went, oh, and I got more and more. And then I went, wait a second, wait a second. Trauma and exploring trauma is about ultimately trying to get to bonding, to attachment, to having fun in your life, to clearing out the things that have hobbled you, hobbled me personally, to then go off and live life fully. So I have to admit, I'm in Disneyland right now. Here I am. Um, <laughs> nice. Well, this will be a first. And, and I'm, <laughs> that's right. And, I, and every once in a while, you'll hear Thunder Mountain roller coaster go by. And you'll know that work is, and trauma and early trauma is really about moving on and living a full life, occasionally doing it in Disneyland. So, All right. so that's well, where I, I'm at. Thank you for sharing for sure. that. And I appreciate that. Uh, sure. Stephen, before we get going here, share with our listeners where you're from originally and then where you're living currently. So originally I'm from, well, I'm a, I was born in, in, um, in Pittsburgh. My uh, parents then moved to Cleveland and then ultimately, and then to, to, to New Jersey, all of which reflected a complicated and chaotic life. My father was in World War II and suffered. For, you know, from undiagnosed PTSD. My mother um, had her own issues, major, major issues. And um, I then ultimately, they then, their lives fell apart and they, they returned, they escaped, they um, retreated back to a, a little religious town in Pennsylvania, um, which is where I did most of my growing up, um, really from fourth grade on, which is what I consider my hometown. Um, and... Um, you know, we didn't watch movies. We were we were um, pretty strict religious environment. Um, and uh, but when I was in college, I, I ultimately got out of that town. I was the oldest of, of six kids. Um, I discovered in my junior year movies, and for the first time, I didn't feel I was insane. I, I really think you know I I came across where I grew up as you know a pretty together kid. You know. My parents were alcoholics and my mother was dealt with drugs, had a lot of problems with drugs. But, you know, like a lot of children of alcoholics and drug addicts, I covered it up and, you know, I sort of over excelled and I felt like a fool inside and, and a fraud. Um, got into college by the skin of my teeth, graduated at the very bottom of my class, ultimately. Um, but, um, but, but in college, discovered movies and found those minds, um, you know, the, all the films that were coming out in the 60s and 70s. I graduated in 1972. I really only watched literally my senior year in college. I didn't leave the movie theater. And I think that's where I began to have a sense that there was a way to not hide yourself from everybody, mm -hmm. that there were people doing things that were so outside the box of what I grew up with, but felt so, so human that I went, I want to do that. I, I want to make movies with no understanding of what that, what that took. But, you know, I, 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 you know, I had a had a wonderful career in movies, um, and here you can hear the you can hear the whistle of the, of the roller coaster going by. Um, 
um, you know, had a you know, really privileged and wonderful life doing that. But during that whole period, of, you know, struggled with many, many things, um, you know, suicidal at times, never got involved with drugs myself, but, you know, really struggled with what's wrong with me, what's wrong with me, what's wrong with me. And I'm not alone in that, and I know that. So I was in therapy and then made a movie um, uh, in 2014 called In Utero um, because the therapist, the analyst I was seeing was very involved with that. And also we were, I had um, remarried and we wanted to have a baby and we were having problems and we decided, well, we'll make a, you know, we'll make a, a movie, a documentary. I'm very lucky. Made a documentary called In Utero and really allowed us, I was the producer, allowed my wife and I to really um, interview some of the top specialists around um, pregnancy. And that was when we first discovered, when I first discovered how critical trauma is in the development of, um, of, 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 of who we are, who we become. Mm -hmm. And from that, some people approached me and that's how I discovered this methodology that I brought to the United States and set up for the Institute. So that's in not a nutshell, me. <laughs> okay. So what did you find out? What did you learn uh, while doing the film about uh, the significance of trauma? Well, you know, the, the, I think the log line we have in it is how you begin is who you become. And really from conception on um, and really in utero, that period of time, that foundational time, you can be profoundly affected by who, who you are going to become, what challenges you're going to have, both physically, psychologically, um, spiritually, if you want to go to that place, um, that you you really you, and, and there are some people who don't have too much trauma, although most of us do because we barely know what human beings are. I think who function better, you know, who 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 are happier, who are not struggling so much, and that what I've learned as I've done the work more and more and more, and also these sessions that I do, when someone presents themselves with a with a current day issue that's almost intractable, you can relatively quickly find out that something happened very early on, really from, from conception through pre at the time it's been very, very difficult for us to get access to. And I think talk therapy, it's been very, very difficult to go back to that period of time. Um, I think the one other thing to bring in, I don't wanna to get too much into it, which is epi, um, epigenetics, which I think most people who are involved with trauma know about it, transgenerational trauma. So the issue of the previous generations, one of the people in the film is Rachel Yehuda, who really uncovered the echoing of trauma in Holocaust survivors. Three generations later, the same um, problems, the same symptoms were showing up, even if they didn't know their grandparents who were in concentration camps. So that became one of the seminal uh, um, uh, uh, sort of research pieces that, that, you know, that really began to, I think, focus people on, on how much trauma affects not just the people who suffer from it, but the generations that follow. And then there are ACEs and then all the things I think that you know about and probably most of your audience knows about that has really brought it to the fore. What is unusual about what we're doing is that we really go back to early and, and, and how do we do that? Okay, wait, wait let me, if, I, if, I, if, I may, if I may, let me pause you for a second yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. before we get into that. So when you were started doing this film and you started learning about uh, trauma and the significance of trauma, did this present a realization for you personally? Because you talked about early on struggling, being suicidal. At that point, did you know what the heck was going on with yourself? Did, did this in turn... I, not really. I mean, although I had, you know, I, again, was a, was a Hollywood director. And I spent a, a lot of money on all these different therapies. Okay, I'm a child of an alcoholic um, and, you know, adult children of alcoholics and 12-step programs, very, very helpful. Alice Miller, um, you know, really helped me understand in Trauma of the Gifted Child, some of those books that were going on really helped me see a, a, a vague picture of beginning to see there's not something basically wrong with me. There's not a genetic problem with me. It's things that happened to me that caused this. You know, I think people have been searching, you know, from Freud, even before Freud, what is it that, that, that causes people to be in such pain? Um, and I think, you know, these are all postulates and I think we're getting close 
spectrum closer to what it is. And I think in the last 15, 20 years, as I was doing various forms of therapy, it was beginning to inform the practitioners I was working with that it's what, what's done to you. I think my, my, the last analyst I sort of was seeing, which I saw for about 10 years, began to talk about the mother imprint, but demonized it too much, I think. You know, it's, it's interesting how I've learned, and now I'm a practitioner, the only person who really can, can clarify things for you, help you really regulate things, is not a therapist, is not somebody else, it's yourself. Mm-hmm. You've got to get to the dynamics inside of yourself that have allowed you to survive as best and release them to really begin to help you make decisions to, I, I don't like the word healing so much, but to fully be who you are. Um, so I had had some sense of it before in utero In utero sharpened it. And then in utero introduced me to this methodology. And it was that method that allowed me to go back to early trauma, my earliest traumas. And, you know, I have, I have some pretty dramatic events that happened to me when I was five and six years old, you know, um, I don't want to get too much into it right now because ultimately while it looks really troubling and looks like it solves the problem. The real problems were I grew up in an environment that allowed abuse, Mm -hmm. physical abuse to take place. So that when that environment exists, when you're in utero, that that's really shaping you in a way that makes it difficult to function in the real world. You know, you you sort of learn the real world is dangerous. So I'm going to adjust myself to live a little bit in fantasy so I can survive or some, whatever the, whatever the survival strategy is. Mike, making movies a lot of it's mm-hmm. fantasy it was a it was a hand into a glove kind of relationship how did the uh conception of the identity uh, the institute come about what was the impetus well, i i um what what happened was i did a session of this work so i i, I was there were, we were in paris the film and some people in amsterdam said can you come over your film, which is very based in science, has outlined exactly what IOPT does. And that's IOPT, Identity Oriented Psychotrauma Therapy, which is uh, based on work by Franz Rupert. At the time when I went to Amsterdam, because they said, well, you know, we'll bring you over, we're gonna do a panel, we're gonna show the film, you know, the kind of things you do with films. And I, I met them and I kind of thought they were a little, you know, they were lovely, but it seemed a little, a little bit strange what they were talking about. But I then, I then liked them. We talked with them. We went back to LA. I live in Los Angeles. And, um, and another woman came from Singapore to interview us also. I produced that film. My wife uh, wrote and directed it. Um, and uh, she came and she did the interview. And then she said, would you like to do a session? And I did that session. And I had been at that point 48 years in therapy, analysis, and 12 mm-hmm. steps, and all these things. And that session broke open everything in a way that nothing else ever had. Well. Nothing. And I was, I was really amazed by it, didn't quite believe it, um, wasn't really sure about it at that point, because it was really about recovered memory. I had been um, diagnosed with issues around recovered memory stuff that came up, and, but we could never find a core problem. And suddenly the core problem really was emerging, which had to do with my grandfather. Um, and, but I didn't believe it. So then, then, again, I'm very lucky in so many ways. I got a call from the people in Amsterdam and said, would you come over and film some of these sessions? And, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll put it together. So I said, sure, and I'll do another session. And, um, and I went over, there was an international training and I was deciding, I've, it's a complicated story. I had decided already I was going to leave movie making and become a therapist. But, you know, my kids are more than capable of, of taking the Gyllenhaal name into, <laughs> into Hollywood. So I was kind of going, it's time for them to do it. I'm getting older. It's a young person's business. I'm going to become a therapist. So I had already decided to become a therapist. But when I discovered this method, I went, wow, mm. this is like nothing I've ever done. And I had so much experience of what was sort of half working that I could feel that this was really working. It was incomprehensible for what, as to why it was working. But I then did a bunch of sessions and you can go to the website, people can see it. I can talk about it some more. 
about how it works, but the key is to do it because it's sort of difficult to believe unless you really are getting into neurobiology on the deepest levels, quantum mechanics, a lot of these things that are beginning to explain why this process of resonating, why this process of even online, and I can begin to pick up things about you. You can pick up things about me that are very deep that I mean, you could, at some levels you could call transference, counter-transference on a certain very you know, elemental level when you're talking about with, with analysts and that. But there's mm -hmm. something that goes on when properly shaped, and we can talk about how that works if you want, pick up details about your life, profound details about things that happen, trauma, because it's in your body, as Bessel van der Kolk says, you know, it's, it's the wounds are in your body and the organism that we are is so miraculous that we can pick it up if it's properly, and you gotta be careful because things will come up and then you have to confirm it, which is ultimately what happened with me. But I then went, this is fabulous. And then I went into the training and I just started training. I went back and forth between Munich and Oslo for about two years, trained in this. You know, I'm a little bit, you know, obsessive compulsive to say the least, you know. You know, I, I've been on a journey for a long, long time. And, you know, I'm going, I think I'm near the end of some tunnel. So I was, I was flying back and forth and doing, doing the training. And then, uh, um, and then Fran said, you know, and I was sort of already feeling it, bringing it to the United States. And that's what I did four years ago. And, wow. um, and it's been slowly growing. The, the, COVID, the, the pandemic sort of, I thought threw a monkey wrench into it, but then we discovered that it works as well online as it does in person. So- Okay, let's, let's very interesting. peek behind the curtain here. Give, give us a nutshell of, what it is okay let's let you and i play okay we're in disneyland we might as well play um what do you what do you what do you want what do, what I... do you want right now in your life oh, <laughs> oh man that's it that's a that's such a great question what do i want oh god yeah what do i want um I want, I guess the first thing that comes to my mind is focus, clarity, um, uh, the, the ability to, um, I get clarity of who I am. Boom. Okay. So then let's, um, let's say I can just turn something over here. So then let's so make a sentence out of that make a sentence you sort of have already but just let's say it one more time okay i would like to it's funny because i talk about this a lot i would like to be clear on who i am I would okay. like to gain clarity about who I am. That feels pretty close to it. Now, if, if I weren't in Disneyland, <laughs> I would write that out just to have me remember it. But we're here, so we're, and we're just playing for a little bit, just to give you a little sense of it. Um, what's just gone on is I have been with you as an organism, complicated organism, experiencing your neurobiology, your memories, your ability to put things into words. I'm actually experiencing some way, a massive kind of layers and layers of what it took in you to come up with that sentence. And it's interesting, just like with you, almost everyone has hardly ever been asked that question by somebody else, what do you want? And they take it very seriously, almost always. Although sometimes people mock me and will just give me a stupid thing. And I'm fine with that. And I could tell you a really funny story, but I won't today, maybe some other time, in which it doesn't matter what anyone says, because the same neurobiology, let's say you go, I don't believe this stuff, which is important to be very careful about this stuff. I'm going to just play with him. It takes the same neurobiology, it takes the same biology. You can't mm -hmm. disconnect neurobiology and biology anyway. It takes the same organism to come up with this. Okay, so I've just experienced that. What you then do, in a couple of different ways, doing if it's a one-on-one -on -one session and i also like group sessions a lot pick three words out of that sentence and maybe if you have something write it down mm -hmm. i don't know if i have something with me but write down take three of those words down so we have 
three words out of that sentence. I would say um, well, clarity. I would say clarity, focus, and um, want. Okay. Okay. Now, what I would do on a, there's different ways of doing this in a one-on-one -on -one session, because what we're exploring is how do you feel around these words? How do you, and that means physically feel, emotionally feel, intellectually feel, think, all these things around each word. So one way of doing that is to take three objects around you, anything, anything around you, and, and apply each word to those objects. So it can be the microphone, it can be your glasses, it can be something on the table, it can be anything at all. Just to just to move it one more level, yeah. Well, <clears throat> I have a uh, cactus here. Okay. So I'll I'll, I'll apply it to that. Um, so in so one so one of the words would be the cactus. Okay. So you just it's, 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 again in a, in a deep way it is playing and play is work I think, but so one word is cactus. Which word would that be? We're not going to spend too long with this. I'm going to just sort of explore with a little bit. I would say clear. Okay. All right. Interesting. Okay. And and pick one. Let's just take two words now to keep it simple. Take one other one other object and let's and put one of those other words to it. Okay. Um. Uh. Want. The other word would okay. be want. And what 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 are you going? To, okay. Clear and want. So what would be the object you'd put want on? Not the cactus, but another object. I would say um, I have a glass of water here. Okay, great, great. Now, you can already see how much work it takes, how much of who you are has already been generated by this question, what do you want? Mm -hmm. Which is a profound, as you said, a profound question. So now there's already an energy around. Okay, so take a moment, just relax, and pick one of those two words. But before you do that, one thing, just repeat the sentence one time. And then when you're ready, pick one of those two objects and tell me what you're feeling and thinking. Okay. Um, well, I think the sentence was, I want, um, what was it? Clarity and focus about who I am, mm -hmm. that's what it is. Uh, and there's something about getting, gaining clarity, which for me right now is, has a lot of energy about it. And there's something very mm -hmm. clear about this cactus. I mean, it's just so, right? It's just simple and it's there. It just has a beingness about it. Um, that resonates with me, I guess. Now, do you feel anything in your body? Just setting aside all the intellectual stuff, do you feel anything? Just what do you feel in your body? I, I feel, I suppose, a, a, a groundedness, a certain groundedness that. Uh, you know when I'm when I'm saying that and thinking about the, the cactus in a sense, there's a certain groundedness that I feel. Now, as a facilitator, I would not rush this. I would take more time to examine it, but I'll tell you what I feel. Picking it up, I had a sudden rush of grief. Hmm. A sudden, I mean, almost tears in my eyes. Just a sudden rush of. Utterly unexpectedly, just, just almost knocked over by a level of grief. I don't know what that means at all yet, no, but profound grief. So let's keep exploring a little bit. Mm -hmm. Go where you want. You can go, you go a little further with cactus, or you can go a little, you know, a little more with want and a glass of water. 
what's happening there. But you can go back. You can keep going. It's, it's all about you. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's interesting that you brought up grief because I just had a, 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 an uncle who died yesterday. Very close. Yeah. We close to me, close to our family. Uh, uh, my mother's brother. My mother is 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 deceased, but it was it was very kind of a uh, big death in the family. But that's interesting that that, that came up. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, you can see. I mean, people can say, "Oh, it's just an accident." Oh, whatever. But right. it was. I, I do this work enough that it was so powerful. Um, and, and, you know, we don't have to go too deep into this. I mean, but you can begin to get a sense of what it is that one human can do for another. And I'm sure as a therapist, you get that too. But this, this organizing of, of a conversation that is put on the subject, not on the practitioner, but on the subject to run the show quickly begins to bring up something very profound. Um, so, so I, 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 I would love to spend an hour, an hour or so with you to really dig deep because what we'd start to find is this grief has roots in something that goes back much further, very mm -hmm. likely, because it was so powerful. It's not mm -hmm. just about, you know, it's so much. So let's keep going a little bit longer and then we can deconstruct a little if you want. So where would you, so staying in this, where would you go? Where, what do you want to do now? You said you have another word, you have all that. Well, I guess the other thing that's interesting to me is this wanting. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it, it almost feels like this wanting for clarity, it feels like a almost an antithesis of clarity, like the, there's a wanting for clarity. It almost feels like they're they're almost opposites like to, to me in a sense like the cactus you know doesn't want for anything you know but yet my part of me is like well what about just being you know there's the, there feels there seems to me that i have a sense of needing or wanting as opposed to just being um that's yeah, coming yeah. up for me as, as, I'm, as I'm saying this. Now, one of the things I'm, that I find coming up for me a little bit is, is, is something we, we do often, which is if you were to, to describe this wanting feeling and that even the describing of it as you struggle a little bit with it, which is an interesting thing right away to note, what age do you feel? What age do you feel you are right now? Is there an age, is there a number that comes up, an age that mm. comes up? Thirteen is the first thing that came to my mind. Yeah. So I think, yeah, it, it feels so wanting is interesting. It's a very interesting word because it's both I want something, there's activeness to it, and also wanting is to to want means it doesn't, it's not there, you know, mm -hmm. you know, that old, it's more, it's an old definition of want, but it's still there. Um, so 13. So is there anything that you can, that comes up about being 13? I don't think I, there was a question at that point for me, you know, there wasn't this question. There was just, there was, I think I had more freedom at that point. Um, I was definitely more creative or being more creative at that point in my life. Um, it's almost like I feel like I want to get back to that freedom mm -hmm. in a sense where there, where there isn't a question of you know, wanting clarity or needing clarity. There just was. Um, yeah, <laughs> there was clarity. In that. Right. And what, what, so as you say that, what more comes up about that? You know, what, what, in terms of being curious, I mean, I'm curious about, okay. I mean, the first 
thing that comes to mind for me is, is the joke, you're never smarter than when you're a teenager and you just realize you don't know nearly as much as you, you know, at mm -hmm. 13. But, but let's keep looking at 13 a little bit. Where were you? Where, where did you live? Do you have siblings? What, yeah, what's going I, I was, on at 13? I, I was on the East Coast. Um, I do have siblings. I have an older brother, younger sister. I was doing a lot of uh, artwork. I was, you know, uh, mm. in playing music. Um, I was, yeah, I was, I was doing a lot of artwork. I mean, that's what I was, you know, that's, that was my thing. That's, um, it was just my, my life. I mean, there wasn't any question about it. You know, I didn't have to make time for it. It just was always there for me. Um, and in a way now I feel like I'm having to, it's almost a struggle to get back. You know, you've got a, a, the stars have to align in a sense to, to make time for, for that. Um, and it's, in, it's interesting because I'm at a point in my life now where I'm really looking at shifting things so I can be more creative now. It's funny how this is all coming up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So what, so what, what stopped you? What stopped me? Well, that's yeah. that's a good question too. I, I was at, I got at a point in my life where well I was in school and then I did initially go to art school and then I was playing music and then I got to a point where, um, you know, well, I, there was a lot of pressure on me to you know make money, do something that's uh, going to be more respectable. Um, so, you know, went back to school. I was, I was, when I was younger, I was, got into a situation where I was, where I felt, I was going to say made to feel or felt like I wasn't smart enough. Right. So that kind of propelled me to, uh, pursue, you know, graduate, graduate school and so forth. But that in, in becoming a, a therapist or well doctor. initially becoming a becoming a physician and then segueing into becoming, yeah, yeah, yeah. becoming a therapist you know but uh, uh, but that completely displaced a lot of my creativity so yeah you see I mean what, and, and what you can see here and I would we'll do a session if you'd like a, a full session. Because I think we want to we want to just give a sense of what this is about because it's so easy to go deeper. But you can see how within ten minutes, right. all the important stuff starts to come up, and it's a combination of both you being allowed, being given permission <clears throat> to just talk openly about yourself, and also for me to have done a tremendous amount of work on my own, clearing out a lot of my crap so that that I'm curious about somebody else i mean i was a massive narcissist you know now now i'm i don't know what i am exactly now but i'm not that and i think feeling you and feeling a grief around okay there's your uncle but there seems to be another grief mm -hmm. about the loss of you in a way and the people not supporting what you wanted to do you know and there's plenty of time i mean it's like you still got plenty of time to sort of explore all those things but I think if you look at the sentence, and I think um, I think I'm trying to think about this is this is this is actually one of my first podcasts. I haven't done many of them. I have them doing on my own webinar, and I should invite you onto my webinar and do that. And I and I'm so I'm kind of experimenting with this, and I think this is I've been uh, so I'll be doing more of them. I think, but it so I don't know where to stop, and but we'll sort of edit this at this point a little bit. You'll edit these things anyway, I'm sure, but. I feel like this is a good place to sort of sit with this and, yeah. and take a step back right. and show you and show you as a therapist and maybe show other therapists what this work does. First of all, I don't have to work very hard. Mm -hmm. I don't burn out doing this work. I, and I think almost no one does because I don't have to do I'm, I'm not responsible for bringing things up it comes up on its own look how much just came up with you and mm -hmm. it comes up with everybody and we haven't even begun to explore where the roots of all, all of this these emotions come from 
But there's some things to notice that are fascinating right away. One is you didn't pick I. You have two I's in your sentence. You didn't pick either I. Now that may mean nothing, but it would be worth exploring. Where is where is God? Where mm. where are you in these words? Mm -hmm. and, and and there's and there's something wonderful about the dynamics here. There's no judgment. It's just knowledge. You start to get knowledge about oh, I got lost somewhere in here. And the fact that there's two of them, which is the I, where are you? So that's one thing. And then another amazing thing, and this is sort of more, I also write poetry and have published a book of poetry and love poetry. And, and, and I sometimes get a little too into it, you know, like, but it's like, and I, I did dream analysis forever. So I, and I love all that stuff, but isn't it interesting that one of the objects is a cactus has clarity doesn't need much water, and the other one is a glass of water. Mm -hmm. And grief, of course, involves involves tears, and you know, and the dry and a cactus doesn't need anything, but of course, it needs water. We right. need to grieve, and the part that's wanting, in a way, is the water, is is the grief. And so, it'd be it'd be interesting to explore a little bit, and then we can move on to sort of. Just so you, this is this is what the work is. This is mm -hmm. what the method is. Is just how how who was your uncle, and how were you close to him, and why this level of grief that I felt because it was a powerful boom. Yeah. Level of well, grief. I think he was he was one of the first people in my life who I think saw me. You know, uh, who we we yeah. connected um which yeah and but um yeah yeah i mean i remember you know he knew he gave me a guitar he knew i was into music he you know when he came over we always played ping pong he knew i was like good at ping pong and he appreciated that he saw me in a, in a way that was really that i felt seen you know um yeah yeah you know. and 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 here you have parents or whatever didn't see you. yeah so but i want to i want to if if i can i want to well what, one last what, yeah what, one yeah. last question before just yeah. just a second just a second and then we can sort of release you from this but take a moment and breathe how how are you feeling right now i'm feeling like this is really intense <laughs> Yes. Fe it feels it feels good it does feel intense um uh it's 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 crazy i mean just how like you were saying you know you didn't have to do much but that one question was was very intense and it was yeah. it's interesting yeah. how this was very timely in my life right now as crazy as it sounds yeah. And it's and it's never crazy because we live in the present, and if we can be in the present, whether we like it or not, we live in the present. <laughs> but the present is so impacted by everything that's come before, and so skews things. Um, if we can get it lined up and clear and understand those things, it can become the wind at our back. If right. we haven't gotten clear, if we haven't gone back and explored these things, we live in a, in a kind of terror about who are we and what are we and i think that's that's one of the things that i love about this work it's one of the reasons why i've kept on trying to retire from filmmaking and do only this but i kind of keep i keep playing around not with narrative anymore i'm doing documentaries but but it's sort of like it's so fascinating i mean even this conversation is like just so awesome you know it's, yeah. just, it's like it's poetry and it's your life and it's emotional and and so so it's a joy. It's and, and Gabor Mate has done this work and 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 has talked about how important it's been for him. And he talks about these sessions have a triumph in them that mm. the human that the humanness is able to surface. Whether it's grieving, whether it's a sense of loss, the humanness comes to the surface, and that's the triumph of this work. That's it's, the triumph. Okay, I didn't mean to interrupt you. You had a question. Well, I was just going to say it's funny that you mentioned him because I, I he was on the podcast and. I was talking to him and I forget what the question was, but he said, all right, 
let, let's let's get into it right now, just the way you did. And he, and he started getting me into this thing. Like, oh my god! But um, look, I want in the interest of time here, I do want to kind of wind up because I got to pick up my young yeah, daughter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're, <laughs> dude, man, you are. This is incredible, and you're incredible. And who, who list the people who are listening to this? Who is this for? I mean, is it for therapists or just anybody? It's it's. Well, we're, 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 we're sort of of two minds at the moment. Like you have two eyes, <laughs> we have of two minds. Kind of trying to somewhat figure it out because so much is unfolding. We're definitely trained. We definitely train people in this work because one of the major missions of this is to get this work out into the world. So one of the things we have is we have a program. We, and we like the idea of training, you know, practitioners, already existing practitioners. We're not wedded to it, whatever field. You can do the field you're in. You can learn this work. It's one day a week community of people that are really interesting and doing this work and and i find and we're just really building it in north america we are kind of a global we have global connection but that's a piece of it but i think there's also just new people coming in and doing this work i mean mm -hmm. it's just i i think it's i you know i have the privilege of being in movies and have access to everything i've done tons and tons of therapy there's been nothing i've ever done that has come as close hmm. to feeling like this is it's science, so there's still improvements to be done. But this has been profoundly the most effective thing in my life. It has made me profoundly effective. And it's also just like being in Disneyland. It's fun to do. It's mm -hmm. it's it's a joy to do. And I keep learning things from it. So there's training. You can just come to a workshop. It's just a donation. Come to a workshop. Check it out. We're beginning to really reach out into the world because I wanted to be sure it worked online. And you can see how easily it works online. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter at all, you know. Um, and that has to do with the fact that we're coming into a quantum age. Really, quantum mechanics has got to be understood. It's all about energy. I don't want to get into that. People tell me don't ever talk about it. But I love the fact that we're moving into a new age, even as we're dealing with profoundly difficult things, the Ukraine, the pandemic, all those kinds of things. Right. We are also I'm profoundly hopeful for where we're going to go. There's a train going by now, a <laughs> Disneyland train going by. Yeah. So that's what we do. Um, we're also, I think, getting more and more into pointing people to other modalities, internal family systems, um, family constellations. Gina Fisher is doing himself, Gabor Mate, Dan Siegel, all these people who I've gotten to know to kind of say, look, go out and explore all these things mm -hmm. and, and have joy in your life, bond, connect with people. I think that's, that's I mean, I have kids and grandkids and a seven-year-old and, you know, my life is, is just... And, and, and I was imprisoned in, in my own past for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's really gone, gone away. So I get to play now, like I did with you today. And, you know, I'm serious. If you want to do a full session, I would love to. I appreciate that. Stephen, it is great to have you on here. I'd love to have you back at a, at a later time. What's the best way for people to get in contact with you? Um, well, they should go to the Identity Development Institute. Okay. Identity Development Institute. Um, and it's online. The work is online, so you can do it in your house. You just there's right now. There's um, three sessions a week. I do a men's group once a month, and I'm now going to start doing um, Wednesday um, from four to seven Pacific Coast time, starting June first. I facilitated a lot, but there are other facilitators where I'll do an introduction, mm -hmm. sort of explore it, like we did with you today i'm i'm training i'm training myself on how to do it so it works today and and then i'll do an id session a full id session um and i'm doing it live now I'm, you know i'm getting to play in my older years with all this new stuff that kids do and i think the last thing is i also want young people who are who are starting to you know, become graduate students or whatever <clears throat> who are looking to go into this field i feel like i can shortcut things for a lot of them it's mm -hmm. not that expensive, you know, going to, going to, you know, becoming a therapist is a very expensive business. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. I went through it. I did get an MFT degree and I never used it. I went, I'm going to do this. And I, and I think it's something that doesn't have to be expensive. You know, it's, it's, um, and, and we're going to be supporting people more and more who go out and do this work. Um, and it's, it's global. I mean, what's interesting, it's not just North America. We have people coming into our sessions from all over the world, Asia, Africa, um, right. you know, Russia, there's someone in Moscow, just in the middle of all this stuff. Um, so it's, it's, it's very available. And I think it, it, it really brings you in touch with yourself in a way that nothing else I ever did does. That's awesome. Well, I'm excited to get this out there and, um, I will definitely be, uh, 
uh, looking into doing a session. I want to thank you for coming on here. Okay, awesome. All right, sir. A pleasure. A pleasure. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay, take care. <laughs> Bye.